Hello everyone, welcome to week two. Uh, my name's Dr. Ellie Jameson and I'm going to be talking about uh, gravity this week. But first of all, we're going to check how all the different pots of water that we left to evaporate last week have got on. So last week we set lots of different sh size and shape pots up in different places and we're going to see if evaporation has happened from any of them. Um, so we're going to start from the ones which were sat on the nice bright windowsill. So we had four different ones from the windowsill in here and with two of them, so in these big pots, we don't have any water left. So one of them was boiled and one of them wasn't. Now to start with the one which wasn't boiled seemed to evaporate faster and one which was boiled evaporated slower. Um, so that was kind of interesting. We thought maybe the boiled one would have gone down faster. It could be the way that we put them on the windowsill though because one which wasn't boiled was closer to the sunlight and the other one was behind some other pots. Um, now this white bottle, so it doesn't have a lid on the top, it was open, but it starts off at 116 grams, so that's 16 grams for the bottle and 100 grams for the water. And then this one, it started going down slower in weight than the open top bottles, open top boxes. And it's now down to 110 grams. So it's only lost six grams in a week. And these two lost 100 grams in one week. So the surface area is much smaller on this bottle. And also because it's white on the outside, this will reflect some of the heat and light coming in from the window. And it's got a small area at the top for the water vapour to get out and escape through. So that one lost a little bit of weight, but not very much. Um, then this one has a lid on it. So this one starts off at 297 grams and it's still 297 grams. So if anyone could guess why this one didn't evaporate. So one of the reasons it didn't evaporate is this lid, every time the water starts evaporating from the top and moving up into water vapor, it would get stuck on the lid and then it would run back down inside the jar. So it couldn't go anywhere, that water vapor, it couldn't leave. Um, so this is another tub, it has a very big opening at the top and it starts off as 186 grams. So we left that in the dark but it was still inside and that one's gone down to 92 grams. So there's a little tiny dribble of water left in the bottom of that one, but that one had nearly all evaporated to after a week sitting in the dark. So let me come to, this one was in the fridge. So this one starts off as 107 grams last week. Um, and the one in the fridge has gone down a bit. That one's gone down six grams as well. So that one's gone down to 101 grams. So the one in the fridge, which is quite big and open at the top, has gone down the same amount as the one in the sunlight on the windowsill um, in this bottle. So they lost the same amount of weight in one week. So then we had one in the freezer. So it's been out of the freezer for a while now, but it's still got a little bit of ice in it. So that was 123 grams when we put it in the freezer. And that one's gone down to 120 grams. That could be because Lily was playing around with the ice and she's dripped it in a few places. But that one, when we weighed it earlier on, had lost one gram in weight from being in the freezer. So then this one was on the other side of the house. Um, so this on a darker windowsill than this one here. So this one's on the dark side of the house. It starts off at 105 grams and it's gone down to 18 grams now. So that one has still got a little bit of water in it. Unlike the ones which are sat in the bright sunlight on this side of the house, but most of it's evaporated. Now the ones which are outside. So had a glass jar so it wouldn't blow over in the wind. And that one's gone down from 300 grams to 225 grams. So that's lost three quarters of the water which is in there, but it's still got some in. So it did rain a little bit last night, so it might have filled it back up a bit. So it lost, it lost quite a bit of water in the first day or two, but then it's probably filled up again. And this one was also outside. So this one started off as 107 grams, and this one's down to 98 grams. So that only lost nine grams of water. So they were both outside, but this one, which is clear, see-through, and got quite a large surface area, lost more weight than this one, which has got smaller surface area and is in a nice reflective bottle. So the ones which lost the least were the ones in the freezer, 
and the one to the lid on. Um, then next up, it was the ones, one in the bottle and one in the fridge, both lost about the same amount. And then the ones which are sat on the windowsill in big open pots lost the most water. Okay, so that was our evaporation from last week. So now this week, we're going to look at gravity. So again, we want to ask a similar question. So what is gravity? Where does it happen? And why is it important? So gravity is a force which attracts objects towards each other. And the bigger something is, the more gravity it has. So something as huge as the sun has loads and loads of gravity. Um, and the sun has even more gravity than the earth has. And the earth has more gravity than the moon has. So on something, on something which has a lot of gravity, if you went up to the sun, then you would weigh more than you do on earth. But if you went up to the moon, the moon has less gravity here on Earth, you would weigh less if you're standing on the moon than you were if you're standing on the Earth. Um, so do we have gravity in space? So everything still has gravity, even if it's in space, but we don't really weigh very much. So and when things, space shuttles and um, the International Space Station are going around the Earth, um, everything still has a little bit of gravity but what's happening when the International Space Station is going around the Earth is everything is falling at the same speed together so if you try and pick something up everything floats around because everything is falling as fast as everything else there but if you go far away into space further from all the planets and you leave Earth's um, gravitational pull then you won't have much gravity acting on you at all so then you'll be truly weightless so gravity is really important to us. So gravity helps us stop floating off from our planet and float off in space. Um, if we didn't have gravity here on Earth, not only would we float off or the plants would float off, rocks and everything else would float off, but the air that we breathe would float off. So we wouldn't be able to breathe here. Um, plants wouldn't know where to grow upwards. So gravity is really important to keep us all here. It might be fun to play around with no gravity for 10 minutes, but then after that, you start to have problems. And you might drift off in space and all your friends and family drift off in space. But we do have gravity and it is important to us. Um, and it helps plants know which way to grow. So plants sense gravity pulling them down and it helps them to grow upwards. Um, it helps to keep our air here. Um, and also gravity helps the earth to go around the sun. So the, the huge gravitational pull as that great way to the sun helps to make the earth and all the other planets spin around the sun. So um, gravity was discovered about 300 years ago by Sir Isaac Newton and um, now we're going to have do something a bit more fun. We're going to play the marble run. Lily, are you going to help me? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to show you the marble run. So this is something you can do at home. So all you need is a ball or a car and a slope. You don't have to have a marble run, but you can have a marble run, you could have maybe a Hot Wheels car track. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to see if we can make a marble run which is really fast and a marble run which is slower. So in the really fast marble run, what we've got is we've got a single little slope and then we've got a big drop. So there are different forces acting on the ball. So the ball is going downhill all the time, so that's gravity pulling it down but it won't get quite as fast as the top down because there's other things which are going to slow it down. So it's got this slope, so it can't just go straight down, it's got to go further, it's got to go across here and then down. And when it's moving down the slope, there's other forces acting on it. So to slow it down here, there's friction, but this is nice shiny plastic, so it goes quite fast. You can always try putting something on the top of the marble one, see if it goes slower as your peak put a piece of cloth on here, does it go faster or slower at all? And then when it falls through here, it's just acting on gravity. So you've got less friction that air, even the tiny bits in the air, the oxygen and nitrogen acting on this will slow it down slightly, but it falls much faster through there than it does down the slope. So we're going to test now which one of these is fastest. Okay, so they're all the same the height, they're sort of the same height, but some of them okay. have bigger falls. And some of them have lots more complicated bits go through. So there's some bits which add friction, so all these little spinny bits. There's some bits where it has to use the speed of going down the slope to make it round this loop the loop as well. So 
Let's That's relying on different pulses. Right, so we're going to start these off at all at the same time. So you're going to just drop them down the middle, or you just want, you want to use this random um, bit? Um, let's use random bits. Let's use so random bits. start over. No, no, we we'll just use this. We'll just start them all there. Why can we start the Because we either drop them down the middle, or we use that break. Yeah, so put, you're going to have three bottles in each, three bottles in each one. Mm -hmm. Right, one more. Okay, right, then you're going to let those off at the same time. Ready, steady, go. Oh, oh mine's just going down there. Oh, so it's got to the bottom already. Oh, and now this one's got to the bottom. And then this is last. This one was last. So this one has less distance to go. So it's just using the rope. These four straight down. These ones are friction. And they have further to go as well. So it doesn't go so. So you can do can some really it? simple experiments with just some balls and maybe a bean bag. And a slope. So if we put can these two down it? at the same time, the ball has less friction than this yeah. bean bag. Because the more it's the bean bag which touch it, whereas the ball just has a tiny bit of ball touching when it goes down the slope. Okay, yeah. Are you going to do them together? Okay. But, oh! So the ball went down there faster than the beanbag. So you can make your own marble run more complicated. You can have small balls and maybe some kitchen roll to make little a, bits, you, put them on a piece of cardboard you can use and see. You use a, yeah, you can use a small marble to go um, down there. Yes. Yeah, and you can try and make your own marble and see what's the slowest you can make it go down there yeah, and what's the fastest. So this will be the fastest one. Just straight down the slope or you can see you can slow it down by having lots of different tubes and pipes there to add in some friction and to make the balls have to go further as well. Mommy. Yeah, so that's it for this one. So if everyone wants to take a picture of any of their marble runs and slopes that they make and then let's see who can make the fastest and the slowest marble run and what makes them different. Okay, thank you. See you next week. Bye.